The symptoms of a heart attack can be very uh, difficult to uh, discern. There are uh, very changeable between individuals, but I always remember an acronym of STOP. Um, the S being shortness of breath, which is a very common presenting sign. T is tightness. Pressure, a very common concern. An elephant sitting on the chest is how many patients characterize this. And then the O will be others. It could be things like uh, very profuse cold sweats, uh, weakness and or pervasive fatigue, palpitation, dizziness or lightheadedness, even loss of consciousness. The P stands for pain, uh, not just chest pain, but possibly pain in the throat, the neck and the jaw, one or both arms, even the back uh, between the shoulder blades. Important to remember, however, that Unfortunately, there are uh, a number of heart attacks which are actually silent. No myth about the difference in uh, symptoms between men and women. They very clearly are different. Textbooks were written on the symptoms that men present with, the elephant on the chest. Uh, but women tend to have uh, uh, a much different type of presentation in many cases. Uh, they will much more commonly complain of the fatigue or the weakness problems, or maybe I just feel a little breathless, uh, maybe I'm just lightheaded at times, rather than having the classical chest pain uh, tightness, uh, uh, clutching of the uh, chest that uh, men seem to be uh, portrayed with. If you're suspecting that you, a loved one, a family, a friend, is in the midst of a heart attack, um, the first thing that you need to do is make sure that you are calling for assistance. Uh, preferable that you call emergency medical services in the U.S. 911. Uh, particularly if the symptoms have been ongoing for more than 20 minutes, it's time to call and do something. Mills Peninsula Medical Center is a facility that has immediately available all of the services needed to treat an acute coronary syndrome of any sort and specifically has a 24-7 staffed cardiac cath lab where coronary vascularization is routinely performed. Center of the room is the cath table. Head up here, feet down here. We have monitoring, uh, which allows us to visualize uh, arteries as we're injecting them. My roadmap, so I know where I'm going when I'm driving along this highway. Intravenous drug administration, our monitoring and recording of, uh, of data and medications, intravascular ultrasound. See arm underneath is the x-ray tube generates the x-rays for us to take our pictures. This device, an image intensifier, is used to enhance the uh, images so that we can use less x-ray, less radiation exposure, and still get better uh, superior imaging. With this table, we can obviously control our table height and make our whole CR move into any plane to match what image we want so we can actually get three-dimensional imaging, uh, if you will, of the uh, coronary circulation. Notice that in this room, most everything is hanging from the ceiling. They're on gantries, they're on uh, uprights, very little on the floor. So we don't have to jump rope, trip over cords like we did in the old hospital labs. So let's take a look at a few of the tools. Imagine you're on this table. Typically we use either the groin and the femoral artery or the wrist and uh, radial artery for access. But this is a sheath. This is going to be introduced into whatever artery we are using. And through this sheath, we're gonna introduce the catheters that we use to do our procedures. So catheter's gonna go in through the sheath, which is gonna sit in the artery for the whole time that uh, the case is going on. And this permits us to put in any number of different uh, catheters and uh, devices without having to continuously re-enter the artery and uh, cause potential problems with, uh, with uh, the surface. So let's just pretend that we've got our catheter up to the heart. The operator is sitting here driving this, moving it so it goes where we want it to go. This is going to be directed into the openings of one of the coronary arteries on the surface of the heart. 
We're going to inject dye through this device so that we can visualize the artery, dye coming through and uh, opacifying the arteries. When we're ready to, let's say, treat a blockage, we're going to take a guide wire, run it through our guiding catheter, like so. Now remember the tip of that catheter is sitting in the artery. So now what I have to do is I have to drive this wire down the artery through its little curves and hooks and side branches and what have you. In most circumstances, uh, we're going to have to take it across a blockage in the artery by maneuvering it uh, in one direction or another or changing the tip uh, designed to eventually get across a blockage. And then once we're across, move the guide wire further distally in the artery so that we have a, a rail, if you will, across a blockage so that we can then, let's say, take a balloon. And you can see that balloon inflate. There's your guide. There's the guide wire all the way down. Here's the balloon between the markers being expanded to treat the uh, blockage that's right in the center of that, uh, of that lesion. So this is a coronary uh, stent, okay? It's actually a stent on a balloon. Looks very similar to the balloon catheter, except if you come in on the tip, you can see that crimped over the balloon is a metal stent. So our guide wire is back down and across our lesion. Now we're gonna bring the uh, stent down. So our stent is just tracking over the uh, wire. You can see the stent and balloon leaving the uh, guiding catheter and coming down the coronary. Position our stent between the markers to span the entire lesion. And then we're gonna uh, blow up our balloon. Leave it sit for a while. And then we're gonna bring our balloon down. So the balloon's gonna shrink back uh, and flag and fold back into its original shape. But guess what's gonna be left behind? Because this has already been now implanted under high pressure in the wall of the artery. So this is gonna stay in the position where that blockage used to be, and it's gonna act as a scaffolding between the uh, ends of the artery above and uh, below the blockage. You know, heart attacks are a, a dangerous thing. There's about a 30% mortality rate with heart attacks overall, half of which don't even survive to get to the hospital to be seen and treated. But fortunately, over the last couple decades, we've seen a steady decrease in the mortality and morbidity from heart attacks, largely due to improved technology, to improved uh, treatment plans and regimens to get patients through these events and back into a productive life. But prevention is still a better cure. In this case, I, let me give you a couple tips just to help to reduce the likelihood that you're gonna end up on a cath lab table with a heart attack. You wanna think about your diet. You wanna restrict your fats. You wanna think about exercise and keep your weight down. If you have elevated cholesterol, you wanna be treated. Get your statins. If you have diabetes, you want that addressed. If your blood pressure is high, you need to be on blood pressure medication. There's a lot that you can do to even prevent the heart attack that might otherwise be in your future. If you think you might be at risk for one of these problems that we've discussed, remember, it's your heart. It's the only one you have. See your doctor. Keep your pump intact.